Yes, hello and welcome everybody. It's Chris here from the Ministry of Dice. I'm back again today with another one of my little video presentation thingamadoodads. And in today's video, what I'd like to talk about is the idea of building Dice Masters teams when you have a small collection. Now, to give you a little bit of context, uh, a little while ago I got an email from one of our Ministry of Dice podcast listeners uh, by the name of Samuel. Hello, Samuel. And Sam was asking for some advice and guidance about building teams. He'd inherited a collection of cards and dice from a family member, wanted to get started, but was honestly feeling a bit overwhelmed by the wealth of information that's out there on the internet and all the kind of competitive meta chat and was struggling to kind of get started building teams. So, of course, I emailed Sam back. I gave him some thoughts and ideas from when I first started out playing with Dice Masters and when my collection was small in the beginning. And I was sat there the other day just clearing out my, my emails, to be honest, and thought, oh, actually, do you know what? That th Those thoughts and ideas would make quite a nice YouTube video. So guess what? Here I am making, a, hopefully, quite a nice YouTube video out of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to share some thoughts uh, around my journey and when I first started playing the game as to how I approached team building when I had a small, more limited collection. Before I do, though, I want to take a moment. I want to say thank you, a massive thank you to all our subscribers and those who take the time to like and comment and give feedback on the videos. You really make me feel like this is all worthwhile. You're the best audience in the world. I absolutely love you to bits. So a huge cheers, massive thumbs up. It's awesome, guys, and I really appreciate when you take the time to subscribe to the channel, when you take the time to hit that thumbs up button, and when you take the time to converse with me, either in the comments section or, as many of you do, when you contact at me through instant message and email so cheers right okay anyway that's the gushy stuff done let's uh, let's get into the video then so let me share a bit of a story about when i first got started so i jumped into the game around the time uncanny x-men came out and my long-standing gaming buddy by the name of billy who i've mentioned a few times before if you're a regular watcher or listener of the podcast um, we picked up a couple of starters and a few boosters just to kind of get into it and what we did is we just shuffled them up we gave them a shuffle we took our limited collections, shuffled all the character and action cards, dealt eight off the top, shuffled all our basic action cards, dealt two off the top, and then just made that a team. Just, just like that, completely randomly. Now, I think that's important, really, and I think that's definitely my, my kind of number one recommendation for getting started with team building when you've got a small team, because what I tend to find is that when new players come in and they get a little bit wrapped up in what's meta and what's competitive and what's going to win me games, it actually becomes a kind of a barrier, a procrastination barrier. You know, the procrastination monkey gets on their back, and it actually stops you from making teams. It actually stops you from playing the game, because you start to get a little bit too wrapped up in what's going on also i think that if you kind of jump straight in and you buy a big collection or you just start battering the wallet picking up super rares and meta cards you can and net decking lists from say championship tournaments and such like you kind of don't learn the the some of the some of the more subtle elements of the game and you don't start to develop a sense of some of the more creative and innovative ways to work through problems so by doing this by just getting your limited collection and shuffling it up and just making a completely random team in the first instance you, you you may have one of those rare moments where you find a, a really interesting combo or a weird synergy that that might be the foundation of doing something more within the future and i'll talk about that in a second uh, you start to get a better sense of what are counters and things that get in the way of win conditions and it helps you become a more creative player because with your limited collection, as you start to then develop that team and evolve that team from that random starting point, you uh, are more creative about the solutions that you start to put in into your list to help you win games. So yeah, legit, I, I had loads of fun. I, I still do it now and again. In fact, Andy and I, if you take a look back through our live streams, did it with the Troubling Waterdeep box, campaign box and team packs because we were like, we don't really know these cards very well. What are we going to do about it? And we we're just like, well, just put them all together, shuffle them and we'll just make a team. You know, we'll draw 10 and pick the best eight or something, you know. Uh, so I even still take this approach today in, as a way of learning about cards, learning interactions, getting a better sense of knowledge and also learning better around creative solutions to support those cards and make them winning teams. So, yeah, give them a shuffle. Why not? If you've got a limited collection, you've only got a, a small amount of cards, just cram them all together, fire them through a deck shuffler and pick the top eight. 
give it a go. You might find that you'll discover something amazing. But at the very least, it'll help you break through that barrier of getting all wrapped up in your head of, oh, what's meta and what counters am I going to be facing and what might those counters be? You know what? Just if you're playing a random team, if you lose, well, it's the learning experience. You know, so there you go. Right, next uh, little piece of advice that I gave Samuel that I'm sharing with you today is go theme. You know, again, uh, I still play this way today. Uh, I'll reiterate, if you look at our live streams, you'll see Andy and I play lots of theme teams. We've just recently done uh, the X-Men versus the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And we've also just recently done uh, the Black Order against the Avengers going Marvel Cinematic Universe style. Uh, and so go theme It would be my next suggestion, particularly if you've started your small collection by picking up some campaign boxes or some starter sets, because they generally have sort of a little set of theming cornerstones that they've been built around you know so why not get the x-men forever campaign box build a team of of brotherhood of evil mutants or hellfire club and then get some x-men and go you play the villains i'll play the heroes and let's see what happens uh, because again it helps you learn and develop your understanding of the game beyond that which you could do uh, learning a, a process by rote you know net decking and following the first three turn routine that that a champion has told you to do um and you then get a sense of little synergies and ways combos work and, and just go from there you know or maybe you're a dnd fan you know so get yourself a little war band together and say right well i'll have one wizard magician person i'll have one bard one warrior one valkyrie a dwarf or something i'm sorry i don't really know classes i'll i'll go all evil or i'll go all neutral paladins or something there's my D and D ignorance coming through, but yeah, and and then ask the other player or share your collection and have them build a fiend team or a mm, demonic minion team, and you know, pretend like you're doing a, a dungeon crawl, and you know, going theme as well. A lot of the campaign boxes, I suppose, that's the campaign element of it all is to is to build your teams that way. So get started with themes. Pick your, uh, you know, go at Marvel Cinematic Universe or the Justice League movie unit or, um, I don't know, just one of the comic book themes or Yu-Gi-Oh! Some people will probably know Yu-Gi-Oh! better than I. But, um, again, break through that barrier of procrastination where you're getting worried about what's competitive and what's meta. If you've got a small collection, well, break it down. Uh, do you know what? I seem to have an awful lot of Avengers in here, so let's just have a go at making an Avenger team and then whittle it down a bit further. Which of these Avengers cards mention cool things with other Avengers? Let's let's you know whittle that collection down a little bit more, right? Let's keep funneling it down a bit more, bit more. Um, by following that process, it'll help you with your team building approach. It'll help you understand the game better, and it'll break through that procrastination barrier. Okay, next on the list. Am I repeating myself a lot? Maybe I am repeating myself a lot. Some of these ideas they just they kind of blend in a way because they're all sort of variations on the same theme, such as this one. Just pick what you like. You know, if you've got. Uh, a limited collection my suspicion would be especially if you've if you've just uh, maybe not if you've inherited a collection but if you've bought in gone to a shop and picked some up that there will be an an intellectual property or an element of the game that appeals to you so if you are a teenage mutant ninja Tur turtles fan and can't get enough of the cartoons you've watched every version of the series since the 80s you've you collected the toys you you may even like the michael bay movie because some somebody out there does, I'm sure. Um, then just why not? You know, that's what you like. So build a team around it. You know, when I first started out, I mentioned I picked up Uncanny X Men, but I was super excited when the Justice League set came out. When I was a young lad, I used to read uh, the Justice League International and Justice League America comics, uh, and then I was also a huge fan, as you can see there on the screen, of the animated. DC Universe, like Justice League Unlimited and the Batman Animated series. So one of the very first teams I built and I, I made straight away because I, I just liked the characters was a Justice League team um, and mostly using the starter set as well. So um, you know, don't don't fret about what's competitive. Everything's got a competitive element. There's no there's no theme or uh, affiliation or or kind of I don't know what you call it, like a trend that you can follow that doesn't have a, a bit of a win condition in there somewhere. You know, there, there will be a card that'll that'll give you a route to success. Well, in the large majority of instances, let's not talk about Suicide Squad. Um, so yeah, just pick what you like. If you've inherited a collection and you and you like DC characters, and there seems to be a lot of Legion of Doom 
dudes in in the collection you've inherited well and you like it and you know you you read the comic books then make a legion of doom team you know if you like the teen titans and you somebody handed you their war light cards then make a team titan set you know why not so start with what you like and then again just as i said before as you then it gets cards on the table it gets you playing it breaks through that procrastination barrier and steps you a little bit outside of that what's competitive what meta state that you've got yourself trapped in and just gets you playing the game just gets you playing the game and by picking what you like then you, the kind of the game tech synergies become secondary and you'll discover them as you go along you know, you might then find, actually, I think there's a better Superman to pair up with this Wonder Woman. So I'm going to use that one now because, you know, in a large majority of instances, you'll have two or three of a character um, and go from there, you know. And also, I mentioned this on another video, that's probably what brought you into the game in the first place. You know, you were a Dungeons and Dag Dragons fan, so you thought you'd try out some of the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, or you're a, you know, a Marvel Comics fan, so you picked up some of the Marvel stuff, or, uh, I don't know, you, you love Deadpool to bits, you can't get enough of Deadpool, so you bought the Deadpool set, you know, that's probably how you entered the game in the first place. You're a wrestling fan, so you picked up the wrestling stuff, you know, that's how you entered the game in the first place. So why deny that element of the gameplay as well? So just start, just get started, pick what you like. You know, I liked Justice League characters, so I made a load of Justice League teams and gave them a go. Uh, in fact, I used the shuffle approach in the beginning. You know, uh, so there you go. Right on to the next one. Anyway, I'm rambling, uh, and this kind of connects really to all those other ideas. But this is kind of how I went about approaching it, and again, I still do it even today. And, and I know many other players who do. Just make one change, and then play it again. So let's say. In theory, you've gone, oh, I've done the shuffle method, I've taken all my, uh, I don't know, my Troubling Waterdeep campaign box cards, shuffled them all up, I dealt eight, made a random eight team, and now I'm starting to see some sort of patterns emerging, and oh, that's quite good for ramping that one, and oh, those two work really well together to deal some damage, and you know, you start to see some patterns emerging through the random, or you go, oh, there's no pattern in here, I need to kind of create a pattern. What I'd recommend is just change one card, don't tear the team down and start all over again, um, just change one card and go, right, well, this ramp would be better if there was this extra element here that would help it. This card I didn't use very much at all during the games, so I'll take that one out, I'll find another one in, and just start building that pattern around it, you know? Play it a little bit, and then go, oh, it's still not quite there. Do you know what would be really handy if I could do something about that counter that's getting in my way? So I'll take one card out and put another one in that's going to help me with that counter that was that was beating my team or right do you know what i'm going to optimize now i've got an overcrush character and a direct damage character so i'm going to focus on the direct damage character let's take the overcrush one out and add something else that's going to help the attune or you know whatever but just make one change and and play it again i'll give you a very real example that i remember very vividly of doing this myself back in the day this harkens back to what i was saying about like in the justice league when the justice league starter set first came out i picked it up and i made a team all justice league team and i focused on these two characters batman here world's greatest detective a five cost mask he was my win condition his game text you can see there says while batman is active whenever you whenever you field a different justice league character gain one life and then he's got the retaliation keyword which is if an affiliated character is KO'd, deal one damage to an opposing player. Big fan of direct damage. Uh, anyone who knows my stuff will know that's the case. And then I just took the, the cheapest Justice League character I could find, Zatanna here, Zatanna Zatara, three-cost mask. Uh, she's got the Justice League affiliation, which is the important part, and then she says, when fielded, draw a die from your bag and add it to your prep area. So the idea was, get Batman out, then buy up my Zatanna's, field the Zatanna's. When they're fielded, I get to prep a dice and gain a life from the two from their two gain techs. Attack with it, get it KO'd, ping some retaliation damage, and then she's in prep area to roll back in and do all over again to get that prep and to get that life gain. What I then soon discovered, though, was that uh, canny opponents would go, well, you've rolled her on level 2 there, she's 2-2, two, two. I've got a sidekick, so I'm just going to chump block it and not KO it to stop you from getting the benefit of that, what, that little combo you're doing. So Yu-Gi-Oh! then, not long after Justice League turned up, I picked some boosters up of that. Uh, you know, again, just I was just picking up two or three boosters for a couple of quid when I was down at my local store once or twice a month. And I got this guy, Goblin Attack Force, Goblin Squad. And he's got a global there, says pay a fist, target monster must block this turn. So I thought, oh, okay, let's give that a try. I took one card out. Pop the Goblin Attack Force in, and then I was attacking with Zatanna and using the Force Block Global to force a character with a higher attack stat to block my Zatanna to guarantee she was KO'd. 
you know uh, and that worked okay that worked well it was mm, getting me somewhere and i was definitely gaining life and pinging retaliation damage and prepping dice but it wasn't it was quite slow it wasn't sort of fast enough or i felt like it needed a bit more uh, and then as i was building my collection and buying a few more boosters i eventually acquired this bad boy the blue eyes white dragon very prestigious very popular meta card uh from from back then because of the global which says pay a bolt knock out one of your monsters to reduce the cost of the next die you buy by two energy and i was like ah okay there we go that's my route there i'll take the goblin attack force out i'll put blue eyes white dragon in and then all i need to do is get a zatanna in the field get a batman in the field pay a bolt ko the zatanna do a retaliation ping field the zatanna get the prep get the life gain but also when i'm carrying her she's going to discount my next purchase or so buy another zatanna and line that one up in my use pile you know so it started a bit more of a machine a cycle there and then because it's not limited to once per turn i could start getting two or three zatannas out in the field and then blue eyes white dragon two or three of them off providing i rolled the bolts which meant i was doing two or three retaliation damage and then i was gaining two or three life and then i was prepping two or three dice from the zatanna and getting the discount benefit from the blue eyes global and slowly but surely the team started to take more form you know and started to um to take more shape and win more games and all i was doing was just sort of that that process of take one card out replace it play it again well, it's still not quite there so i'll take one card out replace it and play it again you know um and i really do advocate that approach uh, and again if you watch our uh live streams on a wednesday night uh, doesn't always happen on camera but you'll see instances if you go to the end of the videos where after the game's concluded you, you know you hear us saying stuff like well it's the first time i've played that team as put together so um we'll have a bit of a chat about maybe andy will say you know it's not singing it doesn't sing yet let's swap this one out or what do you think i might be able to change for this one here that i didn't buy and we just kind of focus on small but meaningful changes to evolve and edge the team towards where we want it to be because we're learning as we play and we're learning as we do and we don't try and just sort of jump two feet in on a net deck um, we try and evolve teams and build them around our style our approach our preferred way of winning what we enjoy what we like um, around themes that we enjoy to not only win games but also to get the pleasure in playing it you know and i think that's super important uh so there we are then folks there's my my kind of four tips those are that's what i emailed over to samuel around team building with a small collection first things first just give it a shuffle just make random teams just don't sit there staring at the cards going oh how do i even which one goes with which and what's the right dice count to have on that forget all that just shuffle them just shuffle them build a random team Next, then, go theme. Play around with the themes. Look at that small collection and say, what have I got a lot of? Have I got a lot of demons? Have I got a lot of fiends? Have I got the winged gods of Yu-Gi-Oh! Ra? Have I got enough to make the Avengers Assemble lineup? Have I got a Captain America, a Black Widow, a Hulk, a Hawkeye, a Thor, and an Iron Man? You know, to just, just do that. Just make, you know, go theme. Uh, and failing that, just pick what you like. Read the game text. Oh, that, that speaks to me. I'll give that a go. Or pick your favourite character and build something around them. And then stick with it. Take one card out, make small changes, and then play again. And then take one card out, make a small but meaningful change, and play again. And through playing, you'll learn what counters your win condition. You'll learn what counters you need to stop other win conditions. You'll learn how to optimise the ramp and churn to be successful. You'll learn how to optimise and maximise the win condition that you're picking. Uh, and slowly but surely, the team will get to a good place. Will every team you, you play around with this way go the distance and become the next top platinum grade world championship winning team no probably not but it'll get the cards out on the table it'll get you rolling dice it'll get you playing the game and it'll help you do something with that small limited card pool that you've started out with right there we go i'm gonna stop I'm, I'm getting very close to getting on the soapbox about diverse metas and stuff again so there's my tips for team building with a small collection if you're a seasoned player you've just watched this video please do hop in the comments below let me know if you've got any ideas that i've not mentioned today that might help new players or players with limited collections get get started up uh, if you are a new player then let me know if these hints have helped you out if you've enjoyed what i've had to say give us a thumbs up and uh oh and uh the youtube mega computer super brain thing on the right hand side of the screen right now is telling you a couple of videos that it thinks you might like because it's you know analyzing your shoe size your inside leg measurements and all the 
finer details of your life to make video viewing decisions for you. Uh, so why not give one of them a try if you've got a few more minutes? But in the meantime, I'll catch you on another video on a podcast or read one of my blog posts sometime soon. All right, folks, thanks very much. Bye!